we've all been there. A breakup. They're hard. Sometimes they're messy. Sometimes there are hurt feelings, at least for one person. Um, but, but one thing you can always count on with a breakup is that your life is changing. And some would argue that breaking up with your comics is just as difficult. Now, I'm not the one that would make that argument, but I think my co-host may. And that's the topic at hand today. Uh, breaking up with your comics. How do you, how do you drop them? How do you, how do you stop buying them? What do you do? We're going to get I'd into say, it. I'd say sometimes it's more difficult than a relationship, if we're being honest. That's the hottest take you've ever had on this. <laughs> it's absolutely ridiculous. Detective Comics has been around since 1930. <laughs> like, I don't know. Here comes the history lesson. <laughs> yeah, no, my dates are wrong. But uh, yeah, man, I'm excited to talk about this one. I, you're going to have to take the lead on this, kind of, because I'm, I, I could end this episode in... 90 seconds i am i'm ruthless when it comes to this yeah you're you're pretty you're pretty ruthless so i think uh, maybe what I, yeah, go uh, ahead. maybe first we just set the stage because maybe yeah, not maybe not everyone has ever had a pull list at a comic shop before exactly. um, or maybe just doesn't quite understand um why it's even necessary to talk about this like maybe we should explain why we're talking about it first yeah so uh, I, we talked about a pull list before. So pull list is an amount of comics that you want held for you every month. So you're reserving or pre-ordering or however your local comic shop would do it. Um, they're going to set something and you're going to commit and they're going to set something aside for you. So pretty much you have the ease and you don't have to worry about it being ready, ready for you. Whether you can't make it in on Wednesday when comics come out or it's a hot issue or whatever, you know that it's set aside for you and it's good to go. So that's what we talk about. When we're talking about like a pull list, right? And what I kind of wanted to talk about today was breaking up with a series and like why that might be difficult or reasons to do it. Uh, so that's when we're talking about that long breakup, that's what we're talking about. So this might be real nerdy, but uh, I definitely wanted to touch base with Dave on this. So um all right so let's split this up into yeah, into two sure. distinct conversations we have the the reasons why you would do it okay and then you have the actual like action of doing it okay and why it might be difficult i think those are probably two separate okay. conversations because one leads right into the other so i think okay. first let's talk about why you would need to do it why you would do it. Yeah. I have some reasons why you would do it. So I kind of want to bounce them off of you and see your thoughts on like why right. you would do this. So, okay. All right. Um, these are kind of in no particular order, but uh, the first thing that came to mind when I thought about this was your favorite title shipping multiple times <laughs> per month. Um, my example series is Spider-Man. Uh, it's normally historically it's been a monthly book um recently it's been kind of like a bi-monthly book so maybe twice a month but you'll notice when school lets out and summer comes around spider-man always becomes a like a weekly and book we're talking amazing spider-man amazing spider-man yes so if you i don't read it, I, go ahead amazing spider-man hasn't been a monthly book yeah I, really for a very long time yeah I mean, even in the 90s you, Amazing Spider-Man was published monthly, but you had Amazing, um, Spectacular, Web of, and then just regular old Spider-Man. And if you weren't reading all four, you probably didn't know what was happening in all four either. Or you would miss things in between issues of Amazing Spider-Man. They've Marvel has forced you into buying this multiple times per month, off and on for a very long time. And and you have that historical context, which I don't, which I don't have, and you've referenced that before. Um, I'm I'm just I'm talking about for me currently like amazing spider-man i can read amazing and understand that storyline but with that said like you have to at minimum it seems like twice a month now in the past mm -hmm. three years uh but over the summer months you will notice there will be some big event or there will be something and you will it, it's oftentimes like a weekly book for you i uh told Dave about that Detective Comics Tower run I just was reading where he almost threw up in his mouth. And that was a weekly book. And Detective is normally once a month. 
Uh, and I did get that. I actually enjoyed it. There's a lot of Batwoman in there. I think you'd like it. So when it we kind of talked offline, I think he would actually enjoy it. But still, when that becomes the norm, it's very difficult to keep up. And that is mm-hmm. something, especially with Amazing Spider-Man. Like, I do like Spider-Man a lot. Um, but picking that book up four times a month, there's so many other titles that I want to personally read it's difficult justifying that in my head and I've fallen off of Spider-Man. So, and he's uh, one of my favorite characters. I think that like, if you take that, that one layer deeper, I think that really it comes like, if your comic is good enough, I'll buy it three times a month. I've done that before, but the rope is much shorter because once the quality starts to slip, when you got me on the hook for two or three times a month, I am not sticking around as long potentially when the art's bad or the story's bad or boring, or I'm just not interested anymore. Now, if it's once a month, you'll probably still have me for a few more months while I try to figure things out. But man, you stitch me up three times a month and and it's not good. (laughs) That's a hard sell. Yeah. It's a, I I couldn't, I can't think of the analogy I was going to think of, but it's like a slow poisoning instead of like a very concentrated poisoning of like, yeah, um, that's a really good point, and I didn't think I, I did not think of it from that angle, but that definitely uh, makes sense. Like you're willing, I mean, I'm 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 more than inclined to be poisoned over a year if I'm only paying three ninety nine a month. But when you're paying twelve bucks a month and you're really not enjoying it, and it's like in your face, like every three weeks or whatever, every week, right. you're like, yeah, no, I'm out. This this is not good. Think, uh, think of it this way: if I walk into my backyard and I get bit by a snake. I'm going to be like, oh, I should probably watch my step back here. (laughs) And then if four weeks go by and I go back out in my backyard and I get bit by the snake again, I'm going to be like, wait a minute. This happened last month. What? I got to figure things out. However, if I go into my backyard and I get bit by a snake every week, (laughs) I'm selling the house by the next month. I'm out. I'm done. It's over. Too many snakes. Way to break that down for us all. I, I got parented <laughs> like a three-year-old. I love that. That's great. Something very basic I can comprehend. I appreciate that. I, I, mean, appreciate I wasn't, that. I wasn't doing it for you, but. Uh, I get the picture. That's that's very, uh, I get it. I get it for sure. Um, I think we, I think we went to like my second bullet point. We kind of organically, like most things on our uh, show come up in conversation, but. Uh, Point number two for me was creative team, man. If it is just not a good creative team, that will cause me to drop a series very quickly. Uh, For me, especially uh, art. If it is a bad artist and I consistently see bad art, um, I'm out. Um, Nowadays, if I consistently see fill-in artists, I'm also out. Um, A fill-in every once... I can handle a fill in artist, you know, if it was a, a book was coming out, you know, once a month. So 12 issues a year. I mean, if there's a fill in artist here or there, it's okay. But when it becomes a consistent thing, um, I, I hate picking on Spider-Man, but um, That's okay. John Romita juniors, John, John Romita juniors on it right now. And as soon as he was on it, I was like, I wonder if he'll make it through 12 issues issue five solicited. They already have a full fill in artist. So like, that's what I'm talking about. Like, I can't. This is one what... where we we differ quite a bit. Really? Okay, I, I am. I will suffer through bad art much longer than you are willing to. I, I mean, think I will, think yeah. the best example of this was when you finally read uh, Grant Morrison's new X-Men run. And you were just relentless <laughs> in sending me panels of Igor Cordy art. Just rubbing this man's nose in it. And I, I have fond memories of that run to the point where I don't even remember not liking the art. Um, and I still think that it's probably decent, despite the, the very real and indisputable evidence you have physically put in front of my face. Um, I think it's probably because Frank Quitely was yes. so good on the issues that he did in that run that yes. I just overlook the fill in issues. Yes. Um, but I, I, I don't mind 
not so great art if the story is good and they're characters that I like. I'll I'll stick it out and hope that it gets better. And that's that's probably the one place where I am far more forgiving and take far more punishment than you. I will give you some. So for that run, that was a long time ago. So I don't think you're recounting this is as clear as you might think. I just oh, definitely not. read this. Yeah, I just read this. So definitely like not. this was, you know, I, I read this like, like a year ago. So I remember it very fondly. Um, I agree with you. The, the quietly art you'll notice too. You could almost base your orders on what arcs matter by for Marvel books currently by what artists are on them. The arcs that actually <laughs> matter have good artists on them. If they're fill in books, they have other artists on them. So I've kind of noticed that like, Oh, something big might happen because X artist is on this, you know? So that's one thing uh, about that run as well too. So just wanted to throw that out there. That, that's fair. And you're right. I mean, I'm definitely, I, I'm looking back on it. Gosh, with those colored glasses. Yeah. That was a long time ago. Yeah. It was a long time ago. So long time ago. that was like, that is what brought me back to the X-Men because all of the legacy virus stuff that they did and then killing Colossus. I was like, Nope, I'm out. See you later. Can't do this. I'm, I'm not happy about it. And then, the new X-Men stuff with, with Grant Morrison brought me right back. And I don't want to slander Mr. Cordley. I think Cordy, I think there was something going on because there's other art I have seen of him that is good. I feel like he was rushed. He like something rushed. happened he where was he was rushed and he I, had to fill in. Um, Frank, Frank quietly is notoriously slow. So okay. my guess is to keep that publishing schedule, they scrambled for fill-ins and gave them very, very, very tight deadlines. And that's, yeah. and then you got what you got. Yeah, that's not uncommon that. at the big two. And I think DC is even worse than Marvel when it comes to fill in artists like the the gap between your regular series artists and your fill in yeah. artists is much wider at DC than it is at Marvel. In my opinion, historically speaking, that might not be the case so much now, but I don't read enough DC to say that confidently. I read Batman now and that's it. Yeah. And they keep a pretty consistent, they try to keep a consistent theme and vibe with that book. So, yeah, I, I don't know if I can say that. Categ I, th I think I might agree with you. I think on some Marvel books, their floor is so low, like they start with a bad artist. So you kind of can't. I don't know. <laughs> some of them like just don't have great artists. So the fill in is there isn't much discrepancy from the other artists. But yeah. Yeah. Um, this can be, we can just very tightly i know this is going to this could be a whole episode amongst itself and i just want to poke dave really quick and get his thoughts on this one but constant rebooting and renumbering of a title this can be a whole other episode and i'm sure it probably will be but when you it. have a perfect jumping on point the counterpoint to that is it is a perfect jumping off point as well, too. I would agree. I do not enjoy the constant relaunch cycle at all. Um, Marvel has really turned me off to a lot of their line because of the constant reboots. And it got so bad for a while before they started this legacy numbering. Mm. I was so frustrated because it was like we're on like volume nine or 10 of some of these comics. Because they just keep restarting with a new number one. New creative team, okay, relaunch the book. Get those those sweet number one issue sales. And at some point, like that can't be sustainable, right? Can't be. It's not sustainable. I mean, and you already have like you have comics that go back to their regular numbering. You know, like uh once they hit a milestone issue, they oh, it's the seven hundred and fiftieth issue. Here's a triple sized issue. It'll be twelve ninety nine, please. Um, and then you get like the regular numbering until they relaunch it again with a new number one and then the legacy numbering comes back and it's like, what are you doing? Yeah. And this is probably, it's, this sounds just like an old man complaint. I understand that and I don't care. That's how I feel. Yeah. I think no, it's stupid. No, I, would, I, I agree with you. I mean, it kind of goes back to our other conversation we were having about the whole con CR continuity episode that like, I, I think we're coming from a place where we want, we obviously want that tight 
connected universe but if you just kind of think of these things as all they're just like individual volumes i mean i guess it does make sense if you're just going to reboot it every year or two but that's just not what we want Um, and and again i mean for the for the topic at hand i mean that is that is one of the reasons why i would is that you've now i like the creative team and i like the direction of the comic and now you've relaunched it so now i'm not trusting what's coming next is the new writer going to is he going to retcon? Is he going to reboot? Is he going to pretend that all the stuff that just happened didn't? I don't know. But now I'm much more hesitant to continue reading the book. Yeah. With that, with that said, have you, at, at some point, you were a new comic book reader, right? And I was like eight or nine, kids. Yeah. 10 years old. I mean, I didn't. Okay. I didn't well, know even, even just like, a, I don't know how your brain works with this, but. How do you feel about just like jumping in? Like when you got me into comics, Spider Man was like issue seven twenty nine, like or whatever. You know, like I didn't, I it wasn't number one. It was just like I saw on the cover, new story arc or whatever. Like you, American Son one of five, and like that's where I jumped in at. The numbering on the issue for me didn't really mean anything. But yeah, it was the same. I mean, the the first issue of a comic I ever yeah. bought was like Thor number four hundred and thirty something. I didn't care. Correct. I was just like whatever this looks cool that's a big guy with a hammer and a beard cool <laughs> i want that one like right there wasn't a lot of thought put into it and you know anytime i picked up something new i would just jump in like I did, the cover looked cool okay i'll buy that give it a shot yeah. and if i don't understand it or didn't like it i wouldn't buy it again yeah now yeah, it's just... it's not you know now we don't and by we i mean like marvel and dc don't um I don't want to say they don't cater to that style anymore, but it's it's now more about arcs and creative teams than character and story. And I don't mean that to say that the stories don't matter, or that they don't care about them, but as time has gone on, the big two have moved further away from continuity, as we've discussed ad nauseum. And again, that makes it easier to drop a book, in my opinion. Yeah, I agree. And the continuity um, gets looser and the creative teams matter more than the story being told in some cases. Okay. Loyalty wanes pretty considerably and quickly. Got you. Reads better in a trade. <laughs> My note says insert anything by Scott Snyder. <laughs> like if mm-hmm. you pick up if you pick up something in single issues and I'm sitting around collecting these issues issues anyway and i'm going to yep. wait for six of them to pile up why am i buying this thing monthly why don't i just get a trade or a beautiful hardcover or something like that because you want to collect it you want to collect it yeah i mean i guess uh, i do it some things i want to collect yeah for what about, whatever reason what about massive events like dc stuff like uh marvel stuff that crosses over oh into a hundred books like why would you pick that up single issue wise like i mean i don't anymore and even yeah. marvel doesn't do that that now it's like there's no such thing as a crossover there's a summer event book it's yeah, six true. to eight issues and then there's like four to five mini series that are three issues long that tie into it and the event never touches the regular monthly books that those characters have you could you could read no Marvel comics except for that one event a year if you really wanted to, and you could still probably figure out what's going on, which is probably the strategy. I just don't like it. Yeah, and it's like X Men's going on, but there's like this X Men. That's where I get confused, and like some of the ones that do touch into like the X Men title, so they'll have like the event, and then it might touch into the regular core X Men title. But there's also like a three issue miniseries, like you're saying, like what is going on like that's where i get really lost and confused like what are we doing here um so who cares doesn't matter yeah doesn't matter yeah. no one cares uh, except us and probably a handful of others that have yet yeah. to find this podcast and agree with us but they okay. are out there i'm confident of that we will find them we will get them um and i guess my last point i think it's kind of like what you have on your board there i'm kind of reading trying to read your board reading your board is if you're kind of like truly not enjoying a series you should drop it like why are you reading it um we'll get to the board later that'll be that'll be in the wrap up but i agree with you i agree with you 
All right. Um, my last point for you, sir. When you are getting the urge to drop a book, do you drop it immediately? Or do you write it out into the arc and see the story and then get off? Or are you just like, I'm out? It's character dependent. Okay. Character dependent. Miles Morales Spider-Man is a great example of that. Okay. I gave that book so many chances and it just <laughs> never got better. So I finally, like, against my own wishes, had to drop it because I just, I couldn't get into it. As Did much as I love arc? that character. Nope. In the middle. Just I care. had two issues sitting, waiting to be read, and I just bagged them back up and Ooh. put them in the box. Boxed them. Didn't even read them. Didn't touch them. Couldn't no do time it. time for that, man. I, got, I don't have that kind of time. I wish I had kind that of time. Discipline. Yeah. I don't know if it's discipline so much as it just is like born out of necessity. Like yeah, for yeah. me to do all of the things that I would like to do with my free time and fully enjoy them, I would have to not work a full-time job. So that's not an option. Therefore, <laughs> I have to be... I have to be very um, quick to decide in those moments of free time what I will turn to for, you know, entertainment, leisure, time waste, whatever. And, and for comics, especially because I have so much stuff that I'd love to read. Yeah. It's, it's just got to if I've made the decision up here mentally that I'm not going to continue reading this book in two months, if I've stopped ordering it from Lone yeah. Star, then I'm just going to stop reading it now, too. Makes there's no sense. point. That makes sense. Now, it, back in the day, when I was going to an LCS and getting paper comics that way, I was a lot more prone to ride something out. Yeah. Because when I canceled something from my pull list, at least at the shop that I did most of that purchasing at, I was on the hook for two more months anyway. So I might as well just time it up when I feel like the arc's about to end or whatever, and I'll just ride it out because I'm going to have to buy those issues. Okay. It's and it's not any different now. I'm pre-ordering two months in advance, but um, because there's because there's sort of a it's a faceless problem. That's with, true. With mail there's order, no guilt. there's no guilt. I can just you know whatever. I'll just put them back in the bag, and then the the, book, the books will stop showing up because I've stopped <laughs> ordering it. But at, at, at the LCS, I had to go in and like tell somebody. So I was more prone to be like, well, maybe it'll get better. I'll stick it out. We'll see. But now it's, you know, that coupled with my adult life, the, the lives of most adults are like that. Let's be honest. Yeah. Um, you know, it's just, it's where I'm at. Plus you're forgetting another important factor. When you're saving 40%, it's a lot easier to put that, that, that comic into a bag and not look at it. Very when true. You're not paying full price for it. And you're like, oh, I might as well. I paid for this. I might as well write it out like 40%. Very true. 215 Very true. ain't that bad. <laughs> like, bag it up. <laughs> Very true. <laughs> Very true. Yeah, man. That's uh so that's should we let's move let's idea. move on to yeah. the actual like how you do it and why yeah, that's I'm... difficult sometimes because and we sort of already touched on it, but I want to make sure we get to the like, the second second problem or um, I don't know. It's a problem. It's not. It's not a problem for me. Like yeah, that. it's clearly not a problem for you. <laughs> Ooh, band aid off. Yeah, get out. So, why why we do it, or you said how we do it? Sorry. Uh, we just talked why. So let's move okay. into like the actual act of it. Like why okay. it's difficult is sort <sighs> of part of this too. Like why you would why you would want to do it. We've covered. Now it's yeah. about like why it is or isn't difficult and kind of how you go about doing it. And for Man. me, well, this is very brief. So I feel like you'll probably have the more, uh, the, the more difficult side of this to, to share. Okay. So I think one, you, the last point you talked about is very, this is very, man, we're like a psychology podcast. We don't know, but uh, like armchair psychology, yeah, like Dr. Yeah, Phil like, psychology, maybe. Correct. Like, I think point one you said about when you're mail order, it's like a faceless thing. For me, it isn't. I have to like go in a comic shop and pick my stuff up. So, and if you pull something for a while, your comic shop person will know what you're picking up. So, like, oh, you've been reading Spider Man for years, and then all of a 
a sudden you're not picking up Spider-Man. They, it hasn't really happened to me, but they might question you and be like, oh, hey, you getting Spider-Man? Like, no, I got to explain why, like, why I'm not but why, why do you it. feel the need th- to explain that? Like, another business? I don't necessarily. I, I, I haven't really run into that now because, like, I just, like, if I'm done, I'm moving on. If I'm but, dropping off of something now, I'm moving on to something probably. I'm replacing it with something else that I enjoy more. But um, why even why even consider that to be a potential problem? Like you just said if they ask yeah. you, you would then have to explain it. No, you don't. Why do why do you, you feel like you'd have to. to explain it? I mean, you don't have to. It's just you just said you I'm would. Not, the I'm talking about the current shops I have now. I, I don't feel obligated in any way to explain anything. Okay. Well, I'm that's, saying shop, that's opposite of what you past, literally just said. Shops in the past, I've felt that way. Why? Like, that's just how the shops were. Uh, so, so this was like a, they sort of put, I don't want to say fear, but like, no, it, it was a, uh, like, what do you mean? I just don't know what you mean by that. Just like you've, you've picked up a book for years and years and years. And then like all of a sudden you like drop off. They might just be like, Hey, like just generally curious, like why you dropped off of a book. And and it's probably more so something that I'm putting stress. Once again, it's like a me putting stress on. Yeah, well, that's what I'm asking. Like, why do you feel that way? Okay. I got you now. Um, I think it just, once again, goes back to the, the local comic shop experience and how much I enjoy that that I I enjoy that experience. So I I want I enjoy patronizing these shops. So I just uh I uh, Yeah, I love that I've stumped you right now. Yeah, no, like I'm I'm I am a little stumped. I'm a little flummoxed, a little flummoxed. Um have to come back to it i don't know i don't know why man i don't know why well maybe uh you should go on dr phil and talk about that maybe he could help no i just <laughs> it was, like, I, was, I was a joke it was just a joke yeah no i feel like i feel like for me the comic shop is more of a relationship based thing and i feel like you sure. don't outside of like books galore where you real those people watched raised you and stuff and you really had a lot of those relationships for you it's more like transactional it's like and for me baby it it should be that way and comic shop a that i shopped at while i was up here it's definitely becoming i love those people but it's becoming more transactional with the rise of cost of everything you give me no discount i can't pull a bunch of books at your shop like i just can't uh they have a very good customer service experience i get some books for my daughter there that's fine I have to I have to move my stuff to Comic Shop B that gives me a 35% discount. It's simply economics in that in that you know equation. Sure. So um yeah, that's that's it. I just like I I kind of reflecting and thinking back on this. I enjoy those experiences shopping, but it does come to a point where money is money. And you told me like. I was just like, yeah, this shop, dude, they have like, I love them. They're close to me. They have a great customer service experience, X, Y, Z. You're like, dude, they don't give you a discount. Why are you shopping there? Like, there it is. So, yeah. Like, so we like, let the wallet speak. Yeah, no, I, I, I took that to heart and thought about that and whatever. I mean, whether you, you pull nothing there, one book there, like they're appreciative of your business. It's not that serious. Uh, I think, like I said, some of these things are like imposed by me. Um, But yeah. I I think that, and this is again, probably a little bit of um, armchair psychology, but like the last, I don't know, two or three minutes of our conversation, like you've been kind of visibly uncomfortable talking about this. Like I can tell that like you do have some very serious, um, I don't know if like, Loyalty is the right word because some of these shops you don't probably have true loyalty to because you didn't go to them for that long. But like you definitely, you know, struggle with how they're going to feel if you stop shopping there or start buying less. Whereas I am quite the opposite. Uh, To me, I think they should be 
grateful that I'm spending anything. So they they are the, the comic shop provides a service to me, not me to them. And I think that is sort of where we are opposites in this particular topic of like breaking up with your comics. And I could I could care less. Sorry, I couldn't care less what Marvel and DC think when I stop reading their books because I want them to feel bad when I stop buying something because the only option that I have to make change in the characters and comics that I like is to let my wallet do the talking and stop buying the, the book. The only option because I can't, I can't tell somebody that I don't like it otherwise. And if I keep buying it when I think it's bad, I'm just telling them that it's actually not bad, it's good because I'm still giving them my money. The comic shop in this scenario is just the unfortunate middleman. I agree. I'm not. And that's part of why I'm very, I'm very just band-aid off with this stuff. Like I don't, I don't think twice about it. It's just over. See you later. Yeah. And I mean, I feel like CRLCS versus mail order. Uh, <laughs> this is a very episode. self-referential episode. Yeah. See that episode. But like we talk about that, obviously, like, yeah, I feel more loyalty to comic shops than you do. Like you can care less. I, I don't feel that way. I feel whatever, good, bad, or indifferent. I mean, I, I, I kind of wish I had some of some of that in me, to be honest. Like, I, mean, I really I feel do like wish you used that... to. I feel like you used to. Eh, but... I mean, did I though? <laughs> no, I mean, really, like they were the only game in town basically for quite yeah, a while. That's true. You know, was I loyal to the Monopoly? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. I mean, when other options did pop up, I didn't switch. Yeah, but. I think it's was it I laziness that I didn't switch. I don't know. I think it's it's you had those connect the you had similar connections to like some of the sh shops I have now because like for me like it goes beyond comics and that's I'm not gonna put my whole personal business out like in the street but like going to the comic shop I don't just talk about comics I don't oh, just yeah, no, walk in there and grab my comics like you were late like I was talking to the 35 percent guy about his family and he was telling me like a funny story involving his you know daughter and so his his son like. So it becomes like more than comics. Thus, you have your pity shops or whatever, your pity pull list or whatever you're saying, like, because you want to have that. The, I think in our in our analogy, I think the, the pity pull list is actually the breakup sex. <laughs> I think that's really what it is. That's what it comes down to. You keep hooking up here and there. Yeah. No, yeah, I, I can. I can see that. Uh, but yeah. Was that all we were covering there? I can't even. Remember. You just I mean, kind of, that's. Kind of I look. I don't. I have. I I have one more thing to say before we wrap this up. So it was like how it was. That was did, the main. Did you have more you wanted to add to like why it's difficult or how how to go about doing it? Because I think we've covered why it's difficult. Yeah, I, I mean, for me, it's not, and for you, it is, and it is for you because there's some loyalty and some community aspects there that. You know, being mail order for many, many years, I just, those are no longer things for me. I agree. I think it's easier, like, like, and I think it's natural and most comic shop owners know that, like, the pull list will wax and wane. Like, it'll go up, it'll go down. And I do like with my, the pull box feature, like, I order what I want. So sometimes mm -hmm. it's really high, sometimes it's really low. And that, and, and that is nice because then you don't have, the whiteboard next to the desk and you're scribbling while you're dropping titles and you don't have any of that. It's just like straight up, uh, you order what you want. So that's, that is nice. But, um, yeah, I think I, I don't, I don't want to just ramble. I think you kind of, we doctor yeah. filled into that one topic about like the loyalty thing. And like, that's, that's what inherently what it probably comes into. Once again, I'll cuss Sheridan cause it's his fault. I was out. I was completely out, man. I wasn't getting anything. I was just reading digitally and loved my life, but now I'm back in. That reminds me. Yes, sir. Another reason why it is so much easier for me to drop a book, specifically Marvel and DC, because I have subscriptions to Marvel Unlimited and DC Infinite. I can drop it today and read it for free in three to six months at whenever I feel like. And that makes it so much easier to drop a monthly comic now because it's waiting for me digitally whenever I feel like reading it. And it's cheaper. 
asterisk, this only applies to currently published monthly comics because as we've discussed before, the backlogs in those those apps aren't <laughs> quite up to snuff. But you can drop a book much easier if you're reading Marvel and DC, if you want to go the infinite or unlimited route because the stuff will get there eventually. Yeah, I mean, that's like this another topic we need to talk about, but like I feel the exact same way about Marvel and DC. It's just disposable that's easier to access. Uh, independent stuff is a little bit more difficult because you don't have like a straight up IDW uh, subscription service. Like yep. there is Comixology Unlimited, which I do no, like. No, there's not. There's no such thing as Comixology Unlimited until Amazon Whatever. fixes I still, it. I still have it. Uh, wow. So wow. some of that stuff's on Revelations. There. Revelations abound on this episode of Black and White Podcast. Yeah, some of that stuff's on there, but it's definitely, I mean, the reader's not as good as Marvel still. Um, but any, anyway, I I, I kind of wanted that's to, a good, another good I, I wanted I, I meant to hit that earlier and it slipped my mind. So I'm sorry that that one came in at the end out of order. No, I'd like to I'd like to leave everyone with this this final thought and you as well up on my little quote board um, for audio pod listeners you, you don't see it but I've referenced it before I always have a little quote on my little board behind me while we're recording the podcast um, I don't have the full quote on my board but I do have most of the quote and Matt I want you to tell me what this quote is from if you're not enjoying it don't waste your time on it and don't bring that clutter into your house. What's it from? Sounds like some Marie Kondo something from that getting rid of things on Netflix. Or is that something you said? I don't know. Wrong. That's a quote from you. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you next week. <laughs>